is there really a talent shortage uh, from your point of view because there are multiple perspectives that we're dealing with now is there really a talent shortage and if there is what is the cost if i need someone to do a great job for me in terms of tiling and there are many nigerians around and there is just one togolese who exactly am i going to take exactly now it's it's not about it's not about the volume right it's about what exactly can you do um it, nigerians are very educated but in terms of being able to put that education into into skill i mean just like dr macanjola said the act of doing which those in their generation go through it cannot be compared with someone that went through the, the four years of university without going to the employment arena and seeing exactly what is happening so there is a skills shortage but there is no want of education and nigerians are very educated i mean there was a time when we had a project in the niger delta and because of um the federal character issue we had to only employ from people in that in that location that was the first time i got involved in vocational education because we had to train people from the start to do what we wanted them to do and if you see the number of people that get apply that apply they are massive but it is from where you screen that you start seeing that look it's not just about the volume it's about what people can actually bring into uh, uh, on the table from short skill from soft skills what exactly are the things um the mindset is this person really wanting to work those are the questions that we need to answer so from a talent point of view i would say one of the major thing talents have issues with the employers are remunerations how much they are being paid for for the value they are giving to the company for instance I'm a graduate of mass communication. I transitioned into tech. I had to spend a lot of money to go and get these skills. Some people go into cybersecurity, they spend thousands, 500K, 300,000 to get these skills. And at the same time, I have to look for internship opportunities. There are no internship opportunities like that. And if at all you see any, they are not paid internship. So I have to wait like six months, three months to do internship because without internship, you may not even get a job. So you have to have a good portfolio before they can even give you a chance. So at the end of the day, I go through that process, and I want to then you now negotiate price with your employer, and, and they are telling you 50,000 Naira. For what? For what I've gone through to get the training and everything. And at the same time, you are giving me an opportunity. There are some people, after doing the internship for six months, and you still want, they feel that, okay, this person is good. That's why they want to move you from being an intern to a full staff. But in the process of you being a full staff, they'll still tell you you have to go through a probation period again for like six months. Since you have been sent with you, you know my capability, you know what I can do. But because they don't even want to pay as much, but they want to use you so much in that space of time, they'll tell you, okay, you have to go through another process, probation, six months again. And at the end of the day, you now still start with the first payment, they will now be telling you 100,000 Naira. It's not so fair on the talent as well. I believe the there are some opportunities that should be given to talent. There are paid opportunities for internship, even if it's for data, because so many of us that are into tech use data a lot. Even if it's for data, for them to work, it is very, very important. And transportation, you know, Nigerian roads now are very, very bad. You can go out today, you are spending 300 naira on transportation. Tomorrow, you can spend 1,000 on that same route you are passing again. So you never can tell what can happen so you have to be considerate as well with the talent when employing them or seeking opportunities um okay I'm, I'm going to be speaking from my own industry experience okay it's like said i'm a lawyer and um like um dr makojola said earlier we have some teachers that they tell they are mediocre they just tell you stories then we have the ones that inspire so as a talent you get a job as a lawyer we all know how it is to become a lawyer in Nigeria. You first go through the rigors of five years in, in university, mm -hmm. plus the strikes. After that, you go to law school. So I would say that we, do not sh we are not short of talent in our industry. Then you come out to join a law firm, a law firm that you have been aspiring to join. 
you've been looking at them like, wow, I would like to work with this person. And on joining, um, they they're expecting you to be a lawyer because they tell us that. Oh, as a copper, they tell you, you're first a lawyer before you're a copper. So I expect you to go to that court, move that motion like a lawyer, and you brace up, you do all of that. And what is the compensation package? What is the benefit that you get? Then they come and tell you, oh, I remember when I started. Oh, it was five naira or 25 naira that I used to get. Oh, and you have to get to work at so, so, so time. What betide you to get to Gnikko, Gnikko, Gnikko? And I'm like, excuse me, where are we? We are here now. So that gap is there. That gap is there. The talents are there. I've been opportune to recruit for my industry, especially, okay, like my law firm, for five good years, I was the one doing the hiring. No, I did not fire. Okay. I was the one doing the hiring and seeing to the um, welfare package of stuff. I've had to, like, first my principal. We've had to hug you. We've had to go, go and think over it. Come back. Let's discuss it. And I come back and I'm like, sir, we have to do this thing. Because I know what they're going through. During COVID, we, 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 we succeeded. We were able to um, hold for the firm. During COVID, we were still working. We hold meetings late into the night. And that's the, way, the life of a lawyer. Sometimes we sleep in the, um, in the law firm because, yes, because the client does not want to hear. And you must deliver. And you hear it must drip with excellence. But is the compensation dripping with excellence? Then at, the, at, the, at the slightest opportunity, they see an opportunity to further their education. They are going. You come and you start ranting. Oh, they came out from law school. You're, you, you, you're teaching them. You're grooming them. You're mentoring them. When you just thought that, oh, okay, you have somebody to hold by the hands. They're now saying they're going for this or they leave you to the, the first four. So really and truly, there is a gap. That generation, they're not ready to sit back and recalibrate and think on this generation. Um, sorry, I believe that most people here are Yoruba and for my daddies and mommies in the house, um, um, I don't know how to say it in English. Um, they say that um, right now, the Gen Z, they are not ready for delayed gratification. You want me to work, I work. And you pay me. All the story of, oh, you learn through the ropes. I, I worked in my law firm for over 12 years. I started as an associate. I was able to persevere. Like the um, doctor said earlier, persistence. I was able to persevere. I, I went through a whole lot. And I rose. I rose from associate to senior associate to head of corporate to the managing partner before I stepped out. But now, they are coming in. They are telling you MP. I'm sorry, I can't even stay here for 12 years. That what happened? How did you do it? This is what they tell me. How did you do it? And I tell them, for you to learn, a rolling stone does not gather dust. You cannot learn here. You have not absorbed. You're living, but really and truly, if you really want to inspire them, there must be a difference. We cannot keep telling them stories. Like I always say, I have unpopular opinions. And I stand by them any day, any time. Money always follows value. All the time, anywhere in the world. I'm sure when you started AJR, for the first six months to one year, you were not paying yourself. It was, ensure that, ensure that, at, the most important thing was that at least I'm alive as a founder and I can go to work. Now, if you are not paying yourself as a founder and an employee comes to meet you that he wants to get paid 150k, what you will ask yourself is, Because even me, that I'm working 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., I am going home with what is left so far as they don't disgrace my children and I can pay my house rent. And, then, and an employee comes to you and says, Oh, because I know this, pay me this amount. What you are going to look for is do you deserve this amount? That is what the employers always look for. Because you cannot... Huh? So the, and the question is, don't forget that, like I said, we don't have lack of quantity, it's quality. So as you are going now, someone is saying, Oga, Oga, if you give me 70 cases, I will come on Saturday. So eventually now, because we have a sea of talent, either half-baked, unbaked, still in the oven, or out of the oven, 
What it then means is that everybody is looking for the best value for money. What it then means is that the talents then have to go the extra mile to defend whatever they want to earn. People that earn one million naira working in, for example, McKinsey, ask them if they have a life. Ask them if they have a life. They most likely, you know what, you know, the higher they pay you as a talent, you'll be suspicious. Say, I don't finish school. You say, I collect 300k. Just tell me you want to kill me. Because ideally, you know. It's plenty in your eye, but one thing the person is looking at is that the work I'll get, what the, what the employer is paying you in his head of head is getting times two of it. No employer is going to pay you your value. He's paying you lesser because he wants to net it out. So while I am not going to absorb the employers of any blame, a lot of work needs to be done on the part of the talents themselves. A university degree does not automatically get you a job. That was in the 90s. University degree does not. I'm a trained doctor. Spent seven years in medical school. When I was going to get my first job in the HMO business, I did four certifications that nobody sent me. Learning accounting, learning law, financial management. So the employers of labor, now the economy is not even helping matters. Which means that your cost of operation is increasing. Your raw materials is increasing. And someone is telling you, if you don't pay me 200 k I won't come to work. Look at them and say, uh, le <laughs> le, talk ponta, I'll be going. So, there also, so it has to be on both sides. Yes, the employer has to be empathic enough to understand that whatever I'm going to pay this guy must be a really take home, not take to the gate. Because there are two different things. <laughs> but, but to whom much is given, much is expected. So I like what Tosin said about people working from home. If you're an employer of labor here, you have examples of people who are supposed to be working from home, and you say, hello, join the message, ah, join the meeting, so, so next time, what will you do? You tell him, sit your bum bum in my office. Oh, one little lost soldier. So it is a two-way thing. And as soon as you get your first work from home employee, and he tells you, oh, one lodger, oh, one titi, one baba lower, the next thing that comes down, he says, he tell you what work from where? I remember Tayo. I will tell you a story. That's what they will tell you. So it is a cycle. It's easier to push the blame to the to, to the employer, not a problem. But I'm sure that if the employers of labor in this room say what they've seen with talents, we serve will keep quiet. Like I said, the employers also have to be empathic. The father when he said that your law they are paying you 50k, 50k now, they will ask you, is it for Gary, is it for a bar? But it means that if the person is not going to go above and beyond to pay you that, it is your responsibility to ensure that you give your best. Because if the man pays you 80k today and you don't work, the person that's coming after you, he won't pay him 80k again. You know why? Because you say I paid Lagbaja 80k. I won't pay. What will you do? He will pay you 50k and watch you to see whether you have sense. And then when you grow, you will not say, okay, I can let 80k. Because one speaking is what? It's twice shy. So we have a lot of work to do on both ends. We sometimes assume that the university degree is an automatic door. No. Seven years in medical school, I was going to find myself, ah, seven years medical school, one year house job, one year NYC. That's nine years of my life in training. I could have said, ah, 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 how many are we? And it's also, a, it's also, an, it's also a thing of value. Let me give you an example. I went, to, I went to NYC camp in Lauren. I don't know how I knew that I was the only dentist in that camp. There was a long queue from, imagine from Otadola all the way down here. Queue. I went to the um, soldier and I said, I'm Dr. Akim Onosoya. I'm the only dentist in this camp. I need to register and go to the clinic. I went to the front. I registered. I went to the clinic. Why? I knew my value. I was the only one in that camp. If anybody has any dirty tissues, I'll tell you I'm in queue. You see what I'm there. I knew my value. I could stand my ground. The talents also need to stand their ground. Sometimes you stay at home without a job because you know your value. People would see, there's some tailors that if you say, so kaftan for me for 15k, they will say, bring it. But when they give you jalamia, you know that it's a different thing entirely. <laughs> and some people will tell you, lie, lie, 15k, I'm not collecting. You will not get that 15k to Badafatai, jalamia, lower run for it. You go back and say, hey, how much do you want? 25k, you say, collect. Because me, we are no one give you before, my eye don't see. So there needs to also be the pursuit of excellence on both sides. Economy is so hard that the employers are looking for the best way to get talent at a cheap price. It is the concept of labor. 
if if every employer pays employees what they deserve, they won't they won't make profits. If you have your own business today, you will do the same thing, but then you, you give yourself justifications because nobody is there. So on both ends, yes, like I said, employers give a good condition. Now, what should the government do? Ensure minimum quality on both ends. Ensure protection of rights on both ends. Ensure that if you are going to pay a out-of-school graduate, you should not pay less than this amount. That amount would have been gotten by adequate research and data to show that that amount can take that child home. Then if anybody pays less than that, you then have a court of competent jurisdiction that you can report to employer to who will be that question next time. And also, the government will also ensure that the irregular cost that small businesses pay. Because if I, imagine if you pay 100k on fuel in a month, then you can only ask on 200k for my salary. Are you this one? <laughs> Even this one, only this one can control SME, SME holders. This one and fuel, I don't put that can control them. Whatever they say, they have to pay. So government has to ensure that there's an enabling environment for small businesses to thrive. Because if the cost of if the cost of production is low, you don't have more leeway as an employer of labor to do other things. And that's why if you work in private company, they'll tell you that when we make excesses, we distribute bonuses. So you also talked about the fact that big companies don't experience this. The truth is, SMEs will always have high attrition of employees. You know why? They are the only ones who will give these guys a chance. So I work with this small I work with this small company today, and I've learned, I'm just an accountant, I've learned two, three more cash books. My, I, my head is telling me KPMG is the next, KPMG is the next, KPMG is the next. But because if I go to KPMG, they will tell me, go back home, what do you know? I, so you now use SMEs as a launching ground. Don't see those SME roles as your permanent roles. That's why you get disappointed. You work with them, look for the one close to your house. So who will not the crew? No, there's another that says, the man who does more than he is paid for, will one day be paid more than for what he does. Yes. And that's what our fathers are trying to tell us. That when I was like, I was two cowboy month by salary. Two cowboy. I bought my first card at 45. Eh, eh, yes, I bought me. Why, why, yeah. But does it also mean that you should not put your hard work? So the small business owners are supposed to be a launch pad for talent. Spend one year, two years there, get your skill and go. You know why to pay them? Because, because they don't make much. They can pay you small. When you go, and that person will have experience to collect the small, you have got to get something higher. The person then leaves, so it is a cycle. That's why for those that relocate to the UK today, you cannot get the job in the UK as per se, eh, I went to this school, I have my MPH, MBA, college job with Mackenzie UK. If you try, it has to be, maybe someone is paying for you from a village. What would you do? You have to work with small business owners, get at least some form of work experience before you now face the bigger boys. And that's why those small business owners get cheap talent because they will not pay you 20 pounds per hour, but they know that they are paying a master's degree reference pounds per hour. But Without them, you can't get the big job you want. So it's a circle. The government should ensure that both rights are protected on both ends. And education quality is low. Don't let us lie to ourselves. My wife studied in the UK. She was teaching me how to use Google. Let you, let, let you say we as a medical school. It was a shame on my head. When she was in final year, they, they, they took them a training on how to write CVs and gave them mock interviews. She spent three years in school. I spent seven years. She was, I used her CV to do my own CV. <laughs> but I came out knowing my defects. Well, I know from the gate that I am half baked. The work is left to me. Nobody will pay an half baked salary, an half baked person salary he deserves. They will pay the other salary the half baked pay until you add to yourself. And when you get the skill, you yourself they don't say you get skill. When you know your skill, when they tell you how much 150, you say me no. You work out knowing that you know your what. So it's on both ends. Economy or that, things are tight. Everybody's looking for the cheapest. If anybody sells adulterated diesel now for 100 naira, people will buy, even if they know it's bad, but because so cheap. Someone was telling me about, he trying to interview the, for an MD for a microfinance bank. And he asked the young woman, what systems did you put in place when you were a previous MD? She said, uh, we have accountants. Then there is receptionist at the door. Then there are two people in the back end. And he was shocked. Now that person will say because she has 10 years work experience, she wants to earn 1 million. But from looking at you, if I give 1 million, me I die. On top of it, you answer me. So it's on both ends. Value has to be exchanged. Uh, because we are too much in the markets, we need to do above and beyond. Take the small business owner jobs you have in your area to gather work experience. I tell someone, 
I went to medical school where we have classes 8 to 4 every day for 7 years. I was surprised when someone said, if you go to Unilag, some people have lectures twice a week. Ah! At the law school. They said yes. I'm like, wow. You know what that means? It means that the three days left in the week, volunteer with the woman beside your school and be her accountant, help her to do her cash book at the end of the day. Put it in your CV, petty cash accountant. If you do it for three years, how many years experience? What's the matter? As an employer of labor, I will give you more preference because at least you've done it before. The unholding will not be so much for you. For the employers, we know how hard it is. We know your margins are small. We know petrol cost is eating into your cost. We know trans traffic is eating. But please, be empathic. Understand that this, don't use them. Instead, prepare them. Because they are two different things. It means you miss them where they are, and you also help them. Some people will pay you a little amount of money, but when you work with them for two years, you can go and collect 5x that amount at the company, because even beyond what they were paying you, they built you together. We mean that we also must be open to apprenticeships, to internships. Your first job as a graduate is basically apprenticeship, as in cultural law, because we have no clue. And that's why they call us management trainees. Because they are still training you. They leave you with the company while general. Not because you want to, but because you don't know how to. Give someone who doesn't know how to repair car, Benz. Good intention will not, help, good intention will not help him. Oh my, oh my, but Benz and Jen with good intentions. 